There we go. Uh, gonna be a friend that forgot to read the shiny new book. No worries. Um, I was. I was reading stuff, um, right before I jumped on, so, like, it, it's fine. I gotcha. <laughs> Fully understandable. Um, but yeah, like, that, that's, that's cool. Which, like, what, what new book, what shiny new book are, are you reading? To, to stuff later. Greetings, guys, gals, and non binary pals, and welcome to the stream. Welcome back to the stream. Uh, we're working on a book club discussion day, as evidenced by the um, Son of the Shadows cover over yonder here. Uh, once again, if you've not been here previously, or for a while or whatever, this is book two in a series. So as we're going through stuff, there will be a lot of spoilers. So you know, also uh, just as a thing, um, because for this for this week it's three and four, um, and just be aware. I'm not going to go into detail on it, just like a general cursory thing. But chapter four has some pretty graphic, like medical trauma and stuff. So. So you know when you're reading through it. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, Days of Blood and Fire, the latest, the latest audiobook. Lacey and Captain Care's Delight. Yeah, Ray series. One of our favorites in the series. Okay, cool. Unscoring Your Fiery is the title might lead you to believe. All right, I was I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I am glad that it is enjoyable for a read though, cause like yeah, <laughs> with a title like that, I have questions sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, um, as a thing, I've finally started uploading the. past um, book club streams to the YouTube channel. Um, I know that there was some stuff in a few of the, the older streams that I was going to try and cut out, but my editing software kept crashing and my head wasn't all that in a good spot at that point. So, yeah. It, um... Wait. Is that, like... How long have we been doing this? Yeah, it must have been... We've been doing book club for as we've been doing book club as long as the stream has been a thing, right? Or was that last year? I can't remember. <laughs> uh, just we're on.
Yeah, we're working on 16 right now. We're working on the 16th plug. Um, it's because the characters travel to an active volcanic area. That is cool! Which the dwarves call the land of blood and fire so they can find a dragon. That, okay, alright, cool. That, that fits. That works. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> Alright. Good plan. This is a very good plan. Uh, we've been doing book club as long as streams, but nothing. If you count the textbook, we start <laughs> Okay, yeah, fair. Fair. Because, like, I, I was thinking about it just now, and, like, I couldn't remember if it was April last year, or if it was, like, a 2020 thing, because the last few years have kind of blobbed into one massive whatever, so, you know. <laughs> reasons and all of that um yeah so uh my point being that i know there's some things that i was gonna try and cut out like i i know when um like triggering content pops up Especially if it's particular things being discussed, I end up, like, spiraling with it. And I know that happened somewhere in the middle of, like, one of the, the Firekeeper's Daughter episodes, but I can't remember which one. So... As as we're going through stuff, I might be able to like go back and edit out sections and stuff because apparently you can do that just on YouTube. You can like cut out a section like somewhere in there um, to get rid of like copyright material and stuff. So there's that. Uh, the pandemic will be <laughs> the bother. Seriously, though. Seriously. Oh man. Um. But yeah. So so there's that. Uh, I'm gonna try and track down the sections in there. There there was. There's been a few, over the things. Um. If anyone's watching through stuff and it notes a weird point that, like, it's just dead space for 20 minutes or whatever, let me know. <laughs> like, I'm not in on that, but I'm, I'm trying to, to get that sorted. Um, and, yeah. I need to I need to check it, but opiumid absence should be ready to go up now if everything worked like it's supposed to. And the in defense of plants is uploaded, but I need to like tweak a few things and then that'll be ready to go. So that's where we are right now. So, yay. Um, yeah, we're we're up to uh I don't remember if I actually finished uploading them all or 
if it was in process, but like the last one I was working on was the Serpent's Tale. So, yeah. Fun times. Um, yeah. Anyway. Pretty sure there's never dead space for longer than a minute unless you've covered with crafting. Okay. Yeah, no, because I know there's there's been a few times when I've just, like, put the VRB screen up and, like, gone to the bathroom for a couple minutes or whatever. So, yeah. But it's also part of a stream thing, so. What have you. Me for getting the uploading done. Right. And I, I will say having that as like yes the, the thing is working is um is is tricking my brain into like being in a better mood when it comes to editing <laughs> so there's that hopefully uh more editable or more edited things are actually gonna be showing up and not just um, stream re-uploads. So that is use something there. Um, yeah. So uh, I've got the. I've got the sketch pad over here in case uh, I get a wild hair about some kind of drawn thing. But, yeah. Um, aside from that, though. Okay, so, uh, I know you haven't reread, um, three and four. Uh, how much do you remember of, of that? Because, like, weirdly, I'm pretty sure book two is the one that I remember the most from the, <laughs> the first three. Because, <laughs> like, there are certain plot points that I totally thought were in the first one, and they're not, because it's happening, like, it, it happens between the two main characters in two, and it was throwing me off. Like, I... I kept waiting for particular scenes that did not exist in, in the first one. Um, but yeah, so, so two ends with, um, Eamon, the younger, I suppose, but Eamon, um, being kind of weird and... Trying to convince Layden to marry him. Um, with the uh, ever interesting statement of, I've been interested in you for even longer than it was a possibility to get married because, like, you're too young and stuff, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and just, mm, no. <laughs> and the illusion that Neve and Karen are off messing about in the forest. Um, <laughs> especially because she shows up to the compound, like, literally with hay stuck in her hair. <coughs> oh, 
will probably recognize when you talk about it. Don't worry about spoilers. This point, mainly remember Layden and the Painted Man end up getting together after he kidnaps her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. That works. Um. Chapter 3 is a lot. We go from, like, okay. So, chapter 3 opens with Leiden uh, wandering around the forest trying to collect herbs and, um, oh. And like restock the the medicinal plant supply that she's got, right? And to maybe like to find some more stuff to to help her mom because she, her mom's not doing too good. And pretty much everyone at this point knows that that Serica is dying from something just not exactly what birds I um or the duration or what have you uh but that that's a thing and So she's wandering around, it's on, like, it's gonna head back to the, the estate and just randomly sees some, like, a, a hint of a wing and, like, a random leg and whatever, and just flitting through the forest. So. Is essentially being led somewhere by the forest spirits, the the fae, however you want to phrase it, <clears throat> and through the trees sees Karen and Neve naked in a pool in the forest. Thus confirming the suspicions that something's going down, um, and like, oh, okay, that's a thing, ha, huh. uh, which you know would further emphasize why he was freaking out when, um, her dad and uncle. suggested heavily, I suppose, that she was going to get married to solidify a political alliance with another, um, family, another keep, something. Things you do not want to see <laughs> with the space ball. Yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> naked, sexy time with like artistic application of water. <laughs> so that that works. Yeah. Um, but see. We know that there there's something a bit a bit fishy going down, especially because like if you remember from the first book that like Kieran is the the little brother of all the siblings, that it's like yeah he no no not not good no. Mm -mm. No, put that away. 
If you don't, then it's just like, ah, there's something that's kind of fishy happening here. But... Based on how Una seems to interact with people, right? We don't know what happened in Kieran's life between Una leaving with Kieran when he was like, what, two, three, something like that? And the point that he's brought into the oh, into the druid group just that according to connor he's been with the druid since he was young and he's 21 now so whatever that means uh, we'd say she was told she was getting married with a veneer of, if you consent, which you will, of course, do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this is totally your your choice. Yeah, no, like, I I mean, we'll give you final say, but, like, you'll do that, right? You'll, you'll do the thing, right? Unless you have some actually decent reason as to why that can't be a thing. Come on now. Come on. Um. On top of which, Kieran just being a creepy bullshit right out of the gate. And, and me seeming to be all for it, I don't know. Weird. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, there's that. <laughs> uh, so, Layden is coming back to the house and runs into Sean. And Layden and Sean have the same kind of mind link that Sirica and Finbar have. Where if they they don't have like full control over um the the walls in the brains in the brains in their mind, his like brain would be like well, that that is a question. If it's if it's something in the thought process and 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 stuff, mind is more abstract and brain tends to be more physical of it. Yeah. Or like abstract versus literal? No. Abstract versus physical. Kind of discussions. Um but she's kind of like just coming out of the forest. Yeah, okay. That that's yeah. Just come out of the forest and kind of scattered because, like, just saw her sister all naked and stuff with some random dude that just known for like a couple days. And Sean sees a shot of them together. And freaks out, and they go back to the house, talk to Liam, and he's just like pale. Uh, Connor sent for, and like all essentially like the men folk of the family 
converge to have a chat about what to do with this information, right? Because they all know the backstory at this point. I would imagine. Because, you know, the brothers were aware of everything because they were there. And... What's this? What's he called in this? You've done? Yeah, you've done. Um, has been there for like the last 18 years, so presumably. <laughs> presumably. He's, you know, aware of the situation. Um, especially because he's the one that told Sarah what was going down. And their way of dealing with all of this is, like... From, from the sounds of it, right? Because, um, <clears throat> when, <clears throat> when Neve shows back up at the house, um, they talk to her, and then she's stuck in, in a room. And then Kieran shows up, and wants to talk to, to people, <clears throat> because something. And... goes in, talks to the guys, and then leaves. And with how, like, how he's acting when he comes out of the room, I'm inclined to believe, at least, that he wasn't fully aware of his relationship to the rest of the family. Which... If one of your teachers, who you've known for, like, years, the better part of at least a decade, probably, at this point, because from what I remember, like, they, he was with the Druids for a while, and Connor was just there, so, like, Yet another example of withholding information not being really good for anybody. So, yeah. But from the sounds of it, and with how pale Karen is, they just told him, hey, uh, this is your relationship to, um, the person that you've been sleeping with. Uh, I would imagine. Unless that's some future thing that gets revealed, but from what I remember, that's that thing that he knows by the end of it. So it, it seems like, you know, We, we, we've got that where, like, the dude's told, hey, uh, you were, you were kind of dating your niece, so don't do that. You, you, exiled, there we go, from the area. Or, like, you, you need to not be here in for a while. Compared to Neve, who must be married in case something horrible happens. Which, like, the inference is, like, in case she ended up getting pregnant or something. Yeah. 
But the 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 family's men folk only give like because I said so as a reason. Uh, why, like, she couldn't be with Kieran, not like because he's your estranged uncle. Because that tidbit of information would be too distressing. But, like, making them break up without that context and then pretty much immediately sending her off to get married to some middle-aged dude that's just, like, staring at her it's all weird and stuff is fine because that makes sense like <laughs> uh information any normal person would communicate is a way we want a person to put it exactly exactly like <laughs> I forgot I wrote that um so as as Liam's trying to to keep everything hush hush, he says, <laughs> "Like we need to keep this in the family." A couple times, we need to make sure that only the family knows about this. Like that's the problem. It was in the family. <laughs> that's that's exactly the issue. <laughs> like oh no. Oh, expecting breaking them up without context to work is foolish. Exactly. Like, uh, yeah, it, oh, where is it? Yeah, and one of the notes that I wrote in here, right? Seems like the incest angle might be more effective in distancing Neve than telling the teenager who already has authority issues that the heads of the family said so, that, so therefore don't do the thing. Without any kind of context. <laughs> what? Y'all really thought that would work? Okay. <laughs> that that's a choice. Uh huh. All right, and then we've got. Um. We've got a cord that Leiden weaves for Neve, made out of she essentially made the the strongest protection charm that she could. It's not called that in like on page, but that's what it is. Um and well weaving kind of mentally reciting the the tale of Angus Og and uh Ikaya. and In context, right? Because that was that's the first story that um Neve heard Kieran tell where he decided to describe her as the swan lady that that whole thing was weird. Um and yeah. <laughs> 
So, I don't know. That interesting choice. It it makes sense in context, being like who the characters are and their interactions up to that point. But like, but we've got a gold thread from Connor's robe, fibers of heather and lavender and celadine and juniper for protection. Um. Plain linen strands from Leiden's work clothes, a thread of blue from Serica's old well-worn gown that Marjorie made for, dark wool from Sean's riding cloak, and a leather end cap snipped from an old pair of her dad's work boots. So, like, it's it's literally familial protection woven together um, and and worn around her neck. She made it to hold the white stone with a hole in it that Kieran left, but it's, it's a protection thing. So, uh, I don't know. Um... And then in real quick succession, we've got, uh, because all this is taking place, like, on the day that Neve and, and what's his face, get married and ride out. So, we've got, um... Neve wearing the the white stone on on a cord, which if she's decided that she hates Kieran and hates men in general and stuff, why is she wearing the thing? Just as a thing, because like there's a you could be sentimental about something that someone like left for you. And like have it in a pocket or the bottom of a trunk or whatever, but there's a difference between that and like actively wearing it. So I don't know. Questions. Um and then Neve heads off, like they they stay the night in the forest, and then the next morning Neve heads off and Leiden is preparing to head back with the the guards that she's riding with and is approached by someone from the neighboring community saying that her kid is sick and needs a doctor because the local healers aren't uh, well, adept enough to do anything and then gets abducted because one of the guys in the painted man's band of um, people uh, pull a big brain genius move and injured his arm enough while trying to unload a cart that it has to be amputated. Also questions about no one questioning why she's wearing it. Yeah. Cause like the cord itself, like no one else was aware that the stone was passed from Kieran to Leiden. And From the sounds of it, they're the only ones there when Neve puts the stone on it and it gets tied on. So I can kind of see it being passed off as like, ah yes, it's a, a wedding gift from my sister. Haha. -ha. But also... <laughs> um, um, I don't know. I don't know about that. I 
Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's so okay. Um this this is the medical section. Just so <clears throat> so we know the the trigger warning thing is up if you're just listening to this and not watching the screen. Uh, I'm going to take it down when that's not part of the convo anymore, but just so you know, and it's there. So Layden can have <clears throat> not pass the rock on, we wouldn't have, yeah, like, okay. Um, with, with that, if your only context is that... Your sister seems to be in love with somebody and is now hurting. And you have no context aside from <clears throat> your family members don't like that you're together because they don't see fit to actually inform you of the um, context of why that's a bad idea. I can kind of see in a in the setting of like a younger sister wanting her older sister to be happy and in saying that she was happy with somebody But also, like, if it's that much of a negative response in a setting where, like, feuds between clans isn't, like, it's a thing, but... It's not like a the Montague and Capulet kind of situation, you know? <laughs> it, it's, it's not exactly a, a... Like, Seven Waters doesn't exactly have a shoot-on-sight order with anyone else at this point in the time span, as far as we're aware, you know? Um... Aside, perhaps, the mercenaries, <laughs> but, but still, when she's getting married to somebody else, yeah, like, <sighs> yeah, like, if, if there was a possibility of, like, that thing resolved then it it would be perceived differently but yeah like she's getting married to somebody else it's just gonna cause more of an issue ah. then yeah it's not so much there I don't know It's interesting, because, like, looking at this as an adult, right? <laughs> I remember different things from, like, the first read-through. And things that I remember from the first read-through, I, I didn't have some of the issues that I have with it now. Mostly because, like, hmm. 
from what I remember, I was like, I would have been like 16 when I was reading this the first time. And yeah. A slightly different vibe. Looking at it. <laughs> Looking at it. <laughs> For some of the scenes. No. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Case in point with the different lens, like for, for different ages and stuff. Um. Sirica in this one is a year younger than I am. Just slightly messing with my head a little bit. Okay, all right. There we go. So there's that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good times. Um, but yeah, like the. <sighs> I realize that it's a, a plot device thing. Yeah, yeah, she's- I did the math. She was 16 when she had Neve. And it's been 18 years. She's 34. <laughs> oh, god. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Which, if I was reading this at 16, it <laughs> mean 19 years ago. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. That's a trip and a half. <laughs> mm. All right. So. So there's that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um. But yeah, like. I realized, right, that... <laughs> that uh there are certain plot devices here where and and also there's a parallel if if how i'm remembering it it's accurate for this one which it most likely is just because symbolism <laughs> And literary parallels and all that. Uh, later, when Leiden is telling uh, 
stories around the campfire to the the guys in the mercenary band. She picks um is it Kukwan? I I think for one and it's like a, a heroic tale and he he goes to train and ends up um having a kid with one of the ladies in the training facility on the island and then comes back marries his, his sweetheart and they continue on but leaves a ring with um the person that he had a relationship with for that period of time and then she gives the ring to the kid and that serves as an identifier to the dad that ah yes this is my kid okay so we have that and then we have uh kieran leaving the white stone with a hole in it for neve that she puts on a cord and she's wearing And gets married off in case she got pregnant, which is a whole thing. Um, so. Well, a little bit of a parallel there, especially because, like, that ends up killing the kid unintentionally in the, um, story. So, there's that. Um,. But also with that, like, artifact from a parental figure serving as uh, an identifier by a parental figure for uh, the, the kid, there's, there's a thing that I remember happening later with Bran yeah so like a double parallel thing that from what I'm remembering is approached differently depending on who's involved especially cause like the one side like Everybody involved is like hurting in all kinds of ways, so yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but that hasn't come up yet in discussion, so we'll just leave it there <laughs> for right now. Okay, so bringing back the trigger trigger warning thing. So we meet Evan, who did the big brain like I can unload the car just fine I'll by myself and then ended up like literally losing an arm <laughs> because reasons um didn't help that he was like massively injured for two days before Leiden even gets to see him so you know, there's that he's just kind of been hanging in in the side of a road um like a temporary tent shelter thing for two days with probably inadequate sanitation and all that so fun times and um it. 
from the description, right, she needs a a a bowl of water to soak a sponge because the sponge has been infused with like a knockout potion essentially like from from the sounds of it it's it's an herbal anesthetic or like an herbal chloroform <laughs> if you will um <clears throat> so in the ingredients list we we see mulberry make an appearance again so that's fun uh so mulberry henmane mandrake and I listened to it like three times, and the only thing I can figure- I need to look it up to see what the actual passage is, but it kept- it kept sounding like he was saying juice of hearts, which far as I know isn't a thing, but maybe. Um, and... I can't remember which which of the guys um, it was that that recognized the scent. Uh, what what his animal was, but yeah, none of those herbs are ones we think of as having a good reputation, right? It, it's it's all very much like in a controlled fall type situation. Like you might not die. <laughs> I, I will give credit to the voice actor that they got to read this, or like the, 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 the reader for the audiobook component. Because like, there's a lot of different inflection and stuff, you know. Except for Mulberry Una's side, because so... I, I don't I don't get that reference. But one of it, yeah. And like mulberries are edible and, and everything. Um but the silk bit I don't know. Um Yeah. So, the the start of chapter four, I'm not going into detail, because, like, I can't. <laughs> I mean, we do have a positive view of Mulberry because silkworms eat it. Oh, okay. I did not realize that. That's cool. But yeah, no, um... Every once in a while, I'll see like mulberry something somewhere, but yeah, yeah, that is cool. I was not aware of that. Very nice. But yeah, the the start of four is a very graphic depiction of um, Evan's arm getting chopped off. And Leiden doesn't have the upper body strength to do the thing, so um, calls in somebody else to do it. Uh, dog volunteers, because like everyone in the the band has animal names, they don't have names. Uh, quote unquote because they've been told that they're not valuable people which is a whole thing 
that I don't remember how much of that gets unpacked as we go, but that's a thing. Um, and uh, so Blaine's trying to figure out what to call this like dude that is the head of a group of people that abducted her. Uh, and decides on Bran because of the stories. Uh, but yeah, so so Doug says that he'll do the the cut through. And then Bran comes in like, no, I'll do it. So, alright. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, for being, like, with the materials that they had to work with and the sanitation situation out in the middle of wherever on a dusty road, like, I, I will say... From the description, it is a, a good, like, clean cut through, so that's something. Um, and we've got, um, a few. Descriptions on on pain meds and stuff too. So, what was it? Uh, Evan was having a hard time drinking anything or taking any kind of nourishment or whatever. So, you you get throwing up the the pain meds. So instead of making an infusion, she put them on the coals, uh, on our brazier. So juniper, pine, and hemp leaves to, to help with the pain. And so wanted to do a lavender and birch leaf infusion, but couldn't because a, he couldn't keep anything down, and B, it was spring, and the birch leaves, what was it? Oh, no, it was, it was midsummer, and the birch leaves had to be picked fresh and used in spring in order for, for that to be effective. So, no. Um, and... Juniper and Pine help with pain, apparently. From from the description, okay, let me just do a fact check on this. Um, yeah, anti-inflammatory, um, most of what I'm saying is 
Most people, what I'm saying is an anti inflammatory and antiseptic. So, yeah. Back to five. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have too much more to go on here. Um, so, yeah. Uh. Also, we've got a wild endive and five leaf being used to kind of sponge the brow to like cool down body tone. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> so we can take this guy down. You know they had anti-inflammatory properties. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. So for anyone not watching the screen, that's the end of the medical trigger spot. Um. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> From what I've, from what I remember, and from four, it's pretty evident that at least the majority of the guys in the, the mercenary group either didn't really have much of a childhood, or what they had was traumatic to varying degrees, kind of, you know. So, when one of the parting scenes, or one of the last scenes in chapter four, is that Leiden gets this, like, dark, fear-filled vision where <clears throat> she, you know, the, the person whose perception she's seeing through at that point, um, like, is trying to, to find someone. But can't for whatever reason, and doesn't really know what's going on. Just that it's part of Brand's past, or the the painted man's past, because he covered in tattoos and stuff. Um. And then we go back a little bit to when they were hanging out around the fire and Leiden asks if they want her to tell stories and one of the guys says like well we don't know any tales like we we don't tell stories here like we don't know any stories that's why we don't tell them and in a lot of stories, right, part of the, like, the bonding experience is sharing stories, sharing legends from the, the backgrounds of the particular characters. Uh, because that's part of the the character's heritage. That's that's part of their lived experience. Okay. 
And with this, there's a combination of kind of an enforced distance in case something happens. Uh, a, a seeming lack of not self-preservation, that's the wrong word. Um, Self-worth doesn't seem like it's accurate either, but, and, <laughs> okay, let me just stop doing that. If, if you hear a weird scrapey clicky noise, there, there's a magnet on my laptop and a yarn needle is kind of stuck to it at this point, and I'm trying to get myself to stop, like, flicking it around. But it's not working. Okay, one second. Right. I don't know where my um. You went. So I need a thing. There we go. Yeah, we'll go with this. There's a magnet. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've often, for angry happy ghost man friend. Yeah, there's, um, <clears throat> that's the closure mechanism. So there's two, there's two magnets in the corners. And, um, yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, so, um, with the, the storytelling bit, right, <clears throat> it's a bonding thing, it's, it's a commiseration thing, it's like, It helps you remember past events if you're sharing the information because you have to actively like go through uh, what happened. Um, a lot of times with embellishment, but sometimes that's all right. It depends on context. Um, <clears throat> and from the sounds of it, they all really respect Bran as a leader, but they, they don't have that, like, they don't have that connection <clears> that, um, uh, and it'd be one thing if it's like the last few years have been a time so we haven't really told stories and stuff, but if the reason that you haven't told stories is that you don't know any, that's something else. Because that implies that, like, if you don't know the legends of your home territory, That, that implies that there was something kind of
traumatic or invasive generally i would i would imagine uh at an early enough point where you hadn't heard the stories from your community and were like removed from that space and just haven't been exposed to any since then. That might be a faulty interpretation, but that's that's what I was seeing. Especially um <clears throat> Especially if how I'm remembering part of Brand's backstory is accurate. So. Which I believe it's the same characters. So it'd be in, in this one. But, yeah. Also, weirdly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a scene that I'm pretty sure um happens between Bran and and Leiden that like I know it's in Ireland now. I knew that it was in Ireland at the point that I read it the first time. I don't know if it's because I hadn't been there at that point and now have a better idea firsthand of what the climate is and stuff. But there's a point that, from what I remember, they're on a boat. And I very distinctly remember that the image I had in my head. of those two hanging out on a boat in Ireland was very much like Florida Everglades mangrove type swamp situation. <laughs> Don't know why. Just that that's that's a thing. Apparently, yeah. I think there there was some mention of like willow trees or something, <laughs> like overhanging. But yeah, that's that's a thing apparently. Um, but yeah. So I don't know. Rather than an ecosystem, right? Fine. It's 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 fine. It's just totally the same thing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it it's like between from the sounds of it like <clears throat> as you would expect in a band of mercenaries everyone has their own like assortment of issues um but Like, a pretty massive childhood trauma is probably, you know, real high up there, so. <coughs> Something to be aware of going forward. It looks like our a real basic octopus kind of, you know. Uh -huh. <coughs> Whoa, hey, 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 no. Ah, 
Alright. Yeah, remember the drink you water. Some random hair. Okay. No, no. <clears throat> well, I was trying to see if it would work as a hat, and it doesn't. But if we if we roll it up a lot, yeah, no, that's not gonna work. But it can have a little ghost friend on the side. <laughs> So, that brings us to the end of chapter four. Uh, for next week, it'd be five and six. So, any, any final thoughts or whatnot before we sign off or turn the Uh, this is kind of a shorter stream compared to some that we've had, but it will work. <clears throat> Have a great night. All right. Yeah. Are you going to let me type? <laughs> Alright. And I'll put links to all the back episodes in the Discord, like directly, when um when they're published and stuff, so yeah. Alright. Have a good night everybody. What? Your arm? Can I sit on your arms? Cause you're doing a weird, like, wavy arm thing now. There we go. <laughs> Alright. Night, everybody. Have a good one. I will see you at least next Thursday. Same time, if not before. Alright. And there should be more of the, the episodes posted like tomorrow. So. Have a good one.